um, what uh, good for me as a Southeast Asianist in UCLA, at UCLA, is that we have a lot of um, Southeast Asia heritage students, uh, especially Filipino and Vietnamese, but we also have Thai and other, and other students, Indonesians, Burmese. Um, uh, and so there's a kind of a natural audience for, for this, uh, this particular um, um, field of study, but a lot of them, unfortunately, are just taking it just for their own kind of heritage interests rather than wanting to pursue it as an area of, of research and study uh, and serious study. In, in um, Singapore, uh, the, the audience was really quite different. Um, uh, there, there, there really wasn't any kind of um, demand for Southeast Asian studies from heritage students. Uh, it didn't really matter because uh, they were already immersed in their own heritage in the region, right? So, of course, but our main um, um, audience was Singaporeans, and there were a lot of, of them who were interested, who were going to go into the civil service um, uh, in the Singaporean government, as well as people who were interested in learning more about Southeast Asia as a uh, context in which to do business and commerce. So, so it was a very, you know, we had very, very different kind of uh, audiences for um, um, for our teaching and and our research. Uh, one thing that I really miss about being in Singapore, besides the food um, and the students, the students were really fantastic. Um, was uh, uh, access to the field. And so, if you're in a, you're a Southeast Asianist. Um, uh, I mean, you can you can understand the logistics, right, of having to go to the field from a place like LA. Uh, it, it costs so much more money uh, to travel, and uh, you need you need to kind of um, do everything in in sort of one fell swoop. Uh, but in when I was based in Singapore, you could go like every other week if you had to. Every time there was a week break, you could just go. You could just jet off, and it was it was uh, it, it took less time than flying from LA to New York. Um, to get there. So yeah, so those are, you know, the, the, um, uh, the rhythm of your field research is definitely very, very different um, when you're based in, in the region. Um, anyway, uh, I'm sure there's a lot more uh, I can talk about here, but um, uh, I'll just maybe leave that to, to questions. If you, if you have any specific, if you want me to elaborate on anything uh, sp more specifically. I think we'll just, um, um, forge ahead and leave enough space at the end for um, folks in a sort of general Q&A to ask particular questions. But if you want to uh, ask a question related to something that Una is saying, please feel free to just type it in the, in the chat and we can return to it during Q&A. And related to this, um, the affordances of both places, right? You come to see different kinds of trajectories um, of different kinds of developments in work and, and scholarship within this field. And so I wonder if you could say a little bit about current trajectories in Southeast Asian studies. Um, is it undergoing a turn? <laughs> and if so, how would you characterize um, a turn um, or this turn? Or what's interesting you um, right now about, about this field? That's a really difficult question to answer, Andrew, um, because uh, Southeast Asian studies or, or people who study Southeast Asia, we have so many varied interests and orientations that uh, and, and, and disciplines that uh, it's, it's really hard to kind of nail down any particular trajectory. I would say that um, for the longest time, Southeast Asian studies, both um, in the U.S. and in in Southeast Asia or anywhere in Asia, has been uh, influenced very strongly by uh, uh, interests of their respective national governments. Um, you know, from whom. Uh, 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 from and and because it's from these governments that state governments that funding is generated and and therefore um, uh, I guess funding priorities uh, and, and all of that. Um, I don't think that's really uh, changed so radically, but I think maybe it's there's less of an influence now from the state in terms of 
um, Southeast Asian studies. And in part, that's because um, I think we've just become so much more interdisciplinary um, in, in a deliberate way. And, and, and it's also become a lot more diffuse and, and inter, um, I don't know, inter something like, uh, there's a lot more collaboration going on across um, uh, different regions um, between scholars. So, so it, it, in, in a very real sense, the influence of state governments on the direction of Southeast Asian studies or the priorities um, that people pursue in their studies has become a lot more diffuse. Um, but yeah, so it depends, I think, on what subtopic or subdiscipline um, uh, you're coming from. Um, and so that's, that's kind of a, I guess I would say that that's really an impossible question to answer, even in, in terms of what I'm doing, I'm not really sure, um, as far as trajectory or development, maybe, maybe the trajectory, uh, maybe the development or the trajectory is that there's a lot more cross-pollination, um, uh, of scholars, uh, um, I mean, I don't mean literally, obviously, but um, although that happens, um, uh, uh, intellectual cross-pollination um, uh, as well as uh, collaboration that's been going on. And, I, I, um, and so the, the gap between uh, local scholarship and um, international scholarship, uh, um, the, the gap between scholars based in the region um, and scholars based um, outside of the region is, I think, narrowing. So maybe that's really the answer. If 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 yeah. I had to give an answer, right? And yeah, yeah. as you said, it's so tethered to all these different institutions that you were referring to. For instance, you know, like at ICS, you saw the Ishat Institute. There are certain agendas that are set um, as there are at RE as there are at yep. Cornell and, and um, maybe not at UCLA, but um, for sure it needs to be that the question needs to be suited suitably resituated within those kinds of institutional settings. And I think you're right to redirect our attention in that. Um, yeah, I, I think that, well, for UCLA, uh, there hasn't been a sort of uh, uh, exp an explicitly stated um, uh, um, kind of outlook that we want to, our, our objective that we want to um, aim for in terms of South, Southeast Asian studies. We have a center for Southeast Asian studies um, and we're trying to um, establish a, a major program in my department um, uh, in Southeast Asian studies. So we've got the undergrad thing um, um, uh, about to uh, roll out uh, undergrad major, um, but we're hoping to establish a graduate program um, really soon. So that's what we're building. But as far as where Southeast Asian studies goes, um, yeah, there's really nothing in particular. I think uh, the 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 main activity for a lot of centers right now seems to be just sort of um, connecting with each other and and trying to make it so that. Um, uh, all of us working together, um, you know, being connected, uh, um, not just as scholars, but as, as centers, um, that, that in, 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 in that way, well, in the U.S., okay, um, the, the different institutions are kind of, uh, have formed a consortium and we're really working together such that um, the, uh, we become greater than the sum of our parts. And um, you know, uh, in some some places in the U.S. will not have uh, as many Southeast Asian scholars as they need. You know, for example, if their students have particular research interests that are not addressed by uh, faculty on campus, then we'd be able to kind of network, you know, with other uh, universities, you know, as a kind of a, a Southeast Asia consortium. So that's I know that's happening in the U.S. and um, but that's not quite. Uh, um, operational yet in terms of outside of the US. Yeah. yeah and so a lot of it was funded by this loose, just giant loose grant. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. So questions of differential access to this kind of global archipelago of Southeast Asian studies centers, but one still sort of anchored, one might say, in the US, but with sort of peripheries that they're turning into centers of their own. 
it's it's so like you to, to come up with a maritime metaphor yeah right um well i want to turn a little bit on that note to your own research right and this abiding interest in indigeneity which i know you have a lot to say about you know within southeast asia but also in general and so as you know it's an important topic of discussion here in north america and we have come to return to um, histories of communities indigenous to the Americas and um, have looked at questions of indigenous ontology and epistemology in various settler colonial states. Right? Um, and also thinking about issues of repair, right, and remediating relations with indigenous interlocutors, right, within the history of, say, American anthropology, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, the question just to sort of um, as a launching pad for you is, can you give us a sense of how um, you think indigeneity is characterized on the ground in North America or in the United States and, and how it's been approached on the other hand in Southeast Asia in your own work, but also any, any way you see fit. So. Um, yeah, uh, believe it or not, this is actually the, the, the the toughest question for me to answer. I think maybe because I spent so much time thinking about it and, and sometimes you, you can no longer see the forest for the trees, you know, so to speak. Um, uh, sometimes the trees are just logged over completely. Um, uh, well, the, the really peculiar thing about studying indigene indigeneity in Southeast Asia, um, and I actually, did not start out studying indigeneity in Southeast Asia. I st started out studying indigenous peoples in Southeast Asia. This idea of indigeneity as a thing is, is something relatively new um, that we're, uh, that well, that I'm beginning to appreciate. Uh, and so now I, I talk about studying indigeneity, but um, uh, really I just started out, you know, just as an anthropologist sort of picking the population you're going to focus on, they happen to be an indigenous people's group um, that I had access to. So that's what happened. Um, but I did not set out, uh, you know, wanting to study ind indigeneity. But yeah, the, the really, um, I guess the, 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 the intellectually interesting thing about studying um, in indigeneity and indigenous peoples in Southeast Asia is that um, the region is populated uh, almost entirely by natives. All right. So how do you under how do you identify who's indigenous and who's not? How do you even define the term indigenous um, when international sort of UN uh, uh, sanctioned categories and concepts of indigeneity? Uh, which are which have been um, built largely around um, you know histories of legacies of white settler colonization um, in the Americas, in uh, Australia, New Zealand, um, and in yeah in in the Americas primarily, and the and and um, uh, you know that those uh, international categories and concepts of indigeneity are largely build or built around uh, that, that kind of history, but uh, they don't map easily onto Southeast Asia because we've got very uh, fluid mobilities, uh, very uh, different kinds of modes of belonging and exclusion, uh, very different colonial and post-colonial politics. Um, you know, uh, we're, it, the region itself has been shaped by uh, it's still being shaped by uh, um, continuous waves of migration uh, and um, um, ethnic fluidity, uh, a lot of intermarriage uh, and indigene indigeneity itself is not always tied, not exclusively tied to being first on the land. Um, and so the, um, it, it looks very, very different in Southeast Asia than it does in, in these other types of states, even though uh, the whole world has been um, um, radically uh, restructured by coloniality, um, the forms it takes in Southeast Asia um, is, is quite different. So different. So um, when we talk about indigenous peoples, we're, we're talking about a particular kind of marginality, a, a particular kind of alterity, a, a particular kind of 